And so Ham till hurts the same question. Would it result in greater loss operating an antenna system at two to one SWR tuning it down to two to one with a tuner? So there there's a lot in that in that question. A, a tuner sometimes get a bad rap for being more lossy than they really are. So a lot of times you get purists who are like, I only operate resonant antennas and I'm not going to use a lossy tuner and a QRP. You're probably not even going to be able to tell the difference, yeah. Given given the scenario, um, the other one is is that you use when you use a tuner. What it does is, is so. <clears throat> this is where I think a lot of people have trouble understanding how transmission lines actually work, and a lot of people will say that the transmission line is part of the antenna, which it's clearly not. So when you look at the feed point of your antenna and you see a two to one you hook a transmission line to that and then you look at it in your ham shack and you're going to see close to a two to one looking into the transmission line. And, th and that's because that transmission line is a window from your shack to the antenna feed point. Now you're going to have some loss and some attenuation based off the quality of the cable and the length of the cable that you have. So that's why the SWR is not going to look exactly the same. What you do is you use your antenna tuner to create what's called a conjugate match, which is a mirror image of the feed point at your antenna system. So remember when I was talking earlier about the SWR circle and how it goes around the center of the Smith chart? So the longer your coaxial cable, the further you travel on that SWR circle. So your SWR should be the same, but the makeup of your real and imaginary impedance shifts based off the length of that. And that's why in the old days, they used to tell everybody your coaxial cable has to be a half wavelength long. Well, if it's a half wavelength long, that's on a particular frequency. Now, conversely, if you go down to your antenna, unscrew it, and you look into the coaxial cable on that side, what you should see is a mirror image of your antenna feed point coming from the antenna tuner because it's because that that's what that's how you that's how they tune. And when you do that, it really is going to minimize loss back and forth between the two. It, it's going to it's going to lower it. What I would do in your case here, Hertz, and maybe I'm wrong. I would use the tuner and I would tune down the two to one and be done with it. It's a lot of words to answer that question. So what's well, kind of sorry a little bit. It's not, it's kind of a complex issue. It's a real and, complex issue. And there are other people who come up with completely different answers, some of which involves black magic and wishful thinking. Right. And I don't I think Ape is as close to right as you can be on that thing. Well, a and, lot of people get mad because I say that the antenna tuner doesn't tune your antenna. Right. And, and they and they go crazy and they they reference the guy's name is walter maxwell really brilliant engineer and what they do is they say well i read a book from maxwell and he's an expert so that makes me an expert right and, and so what they're doing is appealing to authority which is a logical fallacy and he wrote an article in the 70s that said the tuner really tunes my antenna you know so, something along those lines and what they'll do is when they start arguing that the tuner tunes your antenna because he said that as a title of an article and in the article, nowhere did he say that. He, what he actually does is he refers to adjusting the conjugate match on the transmission line. And he calls it a transmission line over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And it's a we call it a transmission line because that's what it is. We don't call it an antenna because that's what it's not. And then they immediately will shift the argument over to, oh, well, I mean antenna system. That's a made up word, right? Because the thing is, is that you have your source, you have your matching unit, you have your transmission line, and you have your load. Now, you can call whatever you want your antenna system, or you can say my tuner and my coax is all part of my antenna system. But you're not tuning your antenna when you use a tuner. Because if you change the length of your transmission line, you have to retune, right? And if you have a tuned antenna at a particular frequency and you're testing at that antenna feed point, the only way to change it is by physical manipulation of the antenna. That's a soapbox issue for me, if you can't tell. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it doesn't even really, really freaking matter. <laughs> right? Because well, you're I, using the, the antenna yeah. tuner to, to match you, the system. Are, are you radioing? Did you make a contact? Right. Then Bob's your uncle. You know, Robert's your mother's brother, if you want to be formal in English. So, yeah, I, there's some there's some weird things that people say about this stuff. I've heard that the power is not lost and dissipated as heat, but bounces back and then re-exits the antenna. Or, or it's additive, like when that one. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. That the power actually increases the more SWR you have. 
So if I have a nine to one SWR and I'm putting 30 watts into it, I can end up transmitting like a, a, a zigawatt or something because it's bouncing back and forth and adding everything together, which is also patently not true because you're creating energy. And uh, if you can create energy, you got some mojo and I'm not talking to you. Yeah. And Tim, Hi, Tim. Tim's awesome. I love his channel. Go, go check out Tim. If you're, you, I'm sure everybody already does. Yeah. Y'all need to look him up. He does some great stuff. <clears throat> Well, the, the problem is, is that you have people who claim to have a level of expertise, which I don't. I'm an idiot. I, I mean, I just, you know, I spent a lot of time yeah. trying to figure stuff out. <laughs> but they claim to have a level of expertise, and then you ask them to explain something, and then they'll refer you to documentation that they've read or misunderstood and use that as a proof point or evidence. And so what Jim and I try to do is this kind of stuff, right? So we want to take stuff, hook it up to a machine, test it out. And then demonstrably show somebody what, what exactly right. is happening. I want to see what it's doing. I want to know yeah, what the innards are doing. You know, not somebody said this in the book or, or whatever. Just trying to understand how all this stuff works is what I'm, what I'm after. I always want to know the why of everything. Yeah, me too.